Before this video begins, I'd like to thank you all for getting me to 20 subscribers already just after two videos. I know that we're on 19 subs, but we're only one off, so I'd just like to thank everybody who's subscribed. I know that 20 doesn't seem like a lot of subscribers, but I am entirely grateful for all the support that everybody's giving me. I'd also like to give a big thank you to the Indie Gaming Guild and the Guild Squad community because of all the support they've shown me in the streams I regularly participate in and because of the most of my subscribers. So, big thank you to them too. Now, on with the video. Hi, I'm Lemons, how's it going? And welcome to my review of Mail Mo for PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. I'll be playing the PS4 version of the game. It was developed by Talpa Games and was published by Undercoders. Mail Mo is a platformer that does something entirely different with the platforming genre. Your main character, Malty, is a mole, so instead of running and jumping around like in most platformers, Malty instead burrows around underground. This leads to some fun platforming stages that make Mail Mo truly stand out above the crowd. The story here is that Malty was just enjoying his break from work at a beach, when one day he's contacted by his cousin Miles and is sent back into action. It turns out that the power station at Peaceful Plaza keeps on losing its power, and it's up to you to deliver the reset codes to all of the power stations in each world in time for the summer festival. Now... With Malty being underground, you're given a fun and unique control style. By holding on to square, you'll start burrowing faster. By holding on to X, you'll perform a super jump, which is essentially just a really high jump. By performing a super jump and pressing R2, you'll be able to perform a ground pound move. And by performing a super jump and spamming square, you'll be able to pull off a dash move. I didn't really like holding on to square to move faster, which you'll end up doing for the entire game because of how slowly Malty moves without sprinting. At times, it felt like my thumb was going to drop off. I'd just like to take some time to talk about the hub world, Peaceful Plaza. It's so wonderful and charming, and there's so many things you can do. You can customise how you look by paying this raccoon back with carrots you've collected in the levels, or how about go ahead and race against some mechamos after you've completed a world. It was just really charming and fun to come back to after the level of just faced. For the majority of the game, you'll find yourself having boss fights with Puckett the Turtle. In my opinion, these boss fights are way too easy, and Puckett shouldn't be the only boss you fight for the majority of the game. You do get to fight off against the main villain, King Rat, but that's only at the end of the game. Finally, I'd like to mention the world you find yourself travelling in. All of these worlds introduce a different gimmick. For example, this snow world introduces platforms that, when you jump, disappear. And this intro world introduces moving platforms. I think what would have made these worlds way cooler is if they weren't so generic. You know, there's just your intro planes level, your sunny beach world, your snow world, your occasional desert world. And plus, there were some worlds that didn't follow the generic game formula, like the ancient ruins in the swamp, which reminds me way too much of Pumpkin Jack. I think it was... I think if all of the worlds were different like this, then I would have enjoyed my time with the game more. And there you go. That was my review of Mail Mo. I'm going to give this game a review score of 8 out of 10. It was incredibly charming, and I loved its whole uniqueness of burying underground. I think it's just the sprinting mechanic, boss fight, and mostly generic worlds that held me back from giving the game a full 10. You have just been watching me, Lemons, review Mail Mo. Goodbye, and have a wonderful day.